In this third video on scenarios where you might want to rewrite the commit history of a Git repository, we're going to look at another uh, frequent scenario that you'll encounter when you're collaborating with someone on a branch. And so the scenario that we're going to be focused on is imagine that uh, you and some collaborator are both working in a project on the master branch and you're kind of working in parallel. So if we look at this scenario here, what we can see is uh, in the repository that's shared by both of you, uh, you've seen commits A, B, and C together. Uh, but in your local repository, you've been working on the master branch and you've made two commits locally, D and E, while your collaborator has also been working in that same master branch uh, on commits X and Y. And it just so happens that your collaborator actually pushed their changes to your shared repository before you pushed yours. So what I mean by that is the collaborator was working, they made commits X and Y, they pushed those changes to the master branch on your origin moat, uh, remote repository. And so they pushed their changes before you were able to push changes D and E. And that leads to an interesting scenario. Like in theory, these two branches are supposed to be synchronized within, with one another, but you haven't pulled their changes yet. You didn't do that before you made commits D and E. In fact, you couldn't have because they perhaps made those changes and pushed them after you had already made commits D and E. But now when you wanna synchronize your repository with theirs, you're in this, this sort of a pain point where uh, how do you do this? And what happens if you were to try and push? Well, if you were to try and push your changes D and E right now to the origin, they would get rejected. And they would get rejected because your branch doesn't have commits X and Y as a part of the history, so it doesn't look like you've got a shared history here. And we can demonstrate this in an example that I've set up. And this is actually a, a, a slightly tougher scenario to demo or to, to come up with on your own, but uh, it's a fun challenge to try and do so. So I've set up a uh, remote repository on GitHub. And if I look at that, what we'll see is uh, we've got a master branch here. And you can see that I've pushed commits A, B, C, uh, and then D. And I was working in commit D, I improved some third feature. And this is based off of that previous example where uh, in this commit, I said the third feature, I made the third feature uh, have the text is the best at the end of it was how I improved the third feature of this, this silly little project. But notice I've made this, this uh, fourth commit to the master branch. Now, if I change back to my code, uh, and what I want you to assume is that that is the collaborator who had just pushed that. But locally, uh, if we were to look at my local history and imagine I'm working on a different feature. I'm working on the first feature. And so I have not yet pulled, uh, I still think locally that the, the master branch on origin was changes that were made to the second feature. So my repository is not yet aware of the changes that my collaborator made to the third feature, but I went ahead and made changes in a commit to my first feature. So we're now in that scenario where uh, the origins master branch is ahead of my master branch, and we're sort of out of sync here. And so there's two ways to go about uh, uh, fixing this scenario. The first thing I want to demonstrate before we talk about fixing it is if we push it right now, if I were to try and push to uh, the master branch of origin, we'll see that it gets rejected. And you can see that it's rejected because it says, uh, Updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. This is usually caused by another repository pushing to the same reference or the same branch. You may want to first integrate the remote changes, I like through a git pull before pushing again. Okay, and so what we're going to see happen is if I do a git pull here, git pull origin master, the default behavior of pulling in this scenario is that git is going to try and merge the branch that exists at the origin in master with my current branch. And so uh, we see that a new commit message is being uh, written here and it's asking us to modify this message if we want. All we were trying to do was actually synchronize the same branch, master. So it's a little bit weird that we're saying we're merging branch master of GitHub, but what, what this is saying is we're, 
really there were two sort of branches that happened. One was local and one was remote. Uh, and to bring them back into alignment through merging requires creating a merge commit. And so we're merging master of, of GitHub with our local. Uh, and so we accept that. And if we were to look at our history again, we would see that uh, here is the uh, excitement first feature that I had changed uh, in my local repository in the remote origin, the, the improvements that we had made to the third feature, right? So that was this commit, third feature improved. Uh, those were uh, shown as that's where the head or that's where the latest of origin master is. And then locally we have this new merge commit. And if this uh, textual representation is a little bit hard to follow, let's take a look at this uh, in, a, in a cleaned up fashion. And so the idea here is here are our shared commits. Uh, here is what we were working on locally. Someone had already pushed these commits to the master branch and we just wanted to catch our repository up. And so one way of doing that is to make a merge commit of these two branches the, uh, and, and, and just assume that they were two different branches at some point in time. Uh, this is a common way of, of doing this, but it, it kind of creates an ugly history, right? Like it wasn't really intentional that uh, you wanted to merge this in and say the way that you were merging in a feature, you were just trying to catch your repository up. And so another way that we could maybe uh, think about this in terms of rebasing, which we had uh, just explored, is wouldn't it be nice if rather than when we pulled creating a new merge commit, if instead uh, we said, okay, well, if someone has made some changes to the master branch uh, and we're trying to catch our history up to it, rather than try and merge, why don't we rebase our branch off of where the remote master branch currently is? And this will create a linearized history. And so it turns out there's a simple flag we can add to our pull command uh, that will do so. And to give a quick preview of that before we go and demo it in the terminal, if you add the rebase option to the pull command, exactly that happens. So when you pull uh, and you rebase, what it says is at the point where your history and the uh, remote history diverged, uh, we're going to take your commits from that point and rewind them and then replay them just like we do in a rebasing off of the latest commits to the remote branch. And so notice this gives you a single path of history and there is no extra sort of extraneous uh, garbage uh, merge commit that's being created automatically for you. So let's go try and demo this in uh, another repository. So I'm going to switch repositories here because we've already made that merge uh, here. Uh, rather than trying to rewind it, I've just set up another repository we can use. I'm going to change to it. Okay, so we are back in our repository. If I look at the history, we see that we've add this excite, added excitement to our first feature. We don't yet have the changes of that are in the remote. So I've changed repositories. It's like we're in a different one entirely. Imagine this is another collaborator. If I were to try and push at this point, we get that same rejection notice saying, hey, you, you, there are changes that, are, that have been made at the remote repository that you don't yet have as a part of your local repository. And so if we try this command, git pull rebase origin master, what we're saying is, okay, let's uh, pull the latest history. And then just like we saw with rebase, we're gonna rewind the commits that our repository has that are different from those that were remote and then reapply them. And so if we now look at our, our history, it looks as though we've got a singular, uh, for the master branch, a singular sequence of commits. So we've made, uh, here's the third feature improved. That was the one that was pushed to the remote repository at origin on the master branch. And because we rebased our work off of what we pulled in, it looks like our uh, changes came after that. And so that means if I were to go look at my uh, readme file now, we should see that the third feature has the is the best text as a part of it and we're working on this point where the first feature is great and so now if i were to push my changes here because i was working on that uh, those commits locally and i hadn't yet pushed them in fact i was prevented from pushing them now when i push them 
we'll get on uh, GitHub a clean history here. There's not an extraneous merge commit that was created just to catch my repository up. And so if you and a collaborator are working on the same branch and making pushes uh, and commits sort of uh, concurrently with one another, and one of you is gonna wind up pushing your commits first, Rather than pulling and merging those commits into your branch, it's recommended you rebase your branch changes when you do the pull uh, using this flag. And what this will avoid is making those extraneous uh, commits that, that weren't really needed. And it gives you a much cleaner looking history. This is the, of the three commands, this is the one that you're uh, just about always safe to do uh, in the scenario where you are uh, pulling from the same branch that you're currently working on because the scenario means that when you try and push you're prevented from doing so and you have to go in one of these two directions in order to be able to push again and pushing is how you would wind up sharing your commits that haven't yet been shared and so either of these ways can work uh, but typically in this scenario you're recommended to rebase so that you have a cleaner history.